Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this video I'm going to look at how people did in game week 28 where I free hit and then I'll show you what I'm doing for game week 29 the bench boost and I didn't have a great week so I'm going to try and justify my um my poor decisions. I think they made sense at the time but you can be the judge of that and tell me in the comments what a fool I was. Right we start off by looking as always at the Midnight Mule FPL league and who the top scorers were. This week we had two joint top scorers. The first one was Cornerstone FC, Augustine Udigu. Apologies if I got your name wrong there. 70 points. I think the average was 33 points, so that's pretty good, 70. Saka for 18, Ward Prowse for 10, Martinelli 7, Martinez 7, Captain Kane 12, Watkins 5, Madison 4. So points all over the place. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven players returned for him. And then on the bench, nobody. Me got two points, so the bench was fine. And then the other person with the 70 was our leader, Jacob Eriksson, Scoglanton IF, 70 points. Now he had Saka captain, who got 18. That's therefore 36. Havertz, 8. Martinelli, 7. Kane, 6. And everyone else didn't really do anything at all. So the captain on Saka made a huge difference. Had Saka just got two points, which often does, then of course this would have been 32 points fewer and it would have been a not so good week. And nobody on the bench. Now as for me, nice big red arrow for me. There I am, down to 75th in our league. Only 44 points. I'm going to step through my team to try and justify what my decision to work because I was free hitting. So the first game was Newcastle. They're away to Forest, and I thought there was a chance, reasonable chance, they may keep a clean sheet. Everyone's got Trippier, so I simply doubled up and got two Newcastle boys at the back. They may realistically get a free a uh, clean sheet. They may not, but I'd have somebody in goal, and Trippier may get a return. As it happened, he got nothing. Also at the back, I had the two Chelsea defenders that everyone would want, the two attacking defenders. They're at home to Everton. Everton have been quite poor at scoring goals. Chelsea have been good at keeping clean sheets recently, and they're at home. This had a reasonably good chance of having a clean sheet, so I was kind of expecting more than just an average of two from those. Now my outfield players, uh, Sun 5, Kane 12, because he was captain, Havertz 8, Watkins 5, they're all okay. So by the end of Saturday, I had 38 points. And on the Content Creators League, which we'll look at later, I was clear the best uh, play, the best manager so far and the highest score. So that was very nice. It was just Arsenal, Crystal Palace left to play. And we all had three Arsenal players. Now, I reckoned Arsenal would win 1-0, maybe 2-0. And considering we didn't know which outfield player is going to score, would it be Odegaard, Martinelli, Trossard, Saka... I thought I'd go for defenders, I'd get the clean cheats in there, which is what I did. So I got Zinchenko and Gabriel, thinking they should be getting six, seven points each. They may get an assist. And they let a goal in. So, so I went heavy on the defence, thinking there could be lots of clean sheets. And they averaged two points, which was extremely poor. I did have Martinelli midfield, but near the deadline, I changed that to Odegaard. Because Martinelli played 120 minutes. Is he going to have fewer minutes? So um, so that didn't go well at all. So I went from a very big green, I was up to 500 and something thousand, to by the end of the game, I was down to nearly 800,000. So that wasn't great. So afterwards I thought about it, thought about my rationale, and I think it was pretty solid and it did make sense and it was okay. Obviously, I could have gone more attacking. I could have gone Saka, but if I turned back time and didn't know the result, Saka would not have been my first choice. It, I would have gone Odegaard and Martinelli before Saka. Even though I had money, I had lots of money. Like I had Madison sitting on the bench. I had Martinelli, Martinez for seven. So money really wasn't a problem for me. But there we go. Um, will I learn from that? I don't know. Probably, probably not. I could easily make the same mistake next week. It was just Saka had his best score this season. He's really not been outstanding, just consistent. So... Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't get it right, but it could have gone very nice. And it nearly did go very nice. With one game to go, I was doing okay. So I ended up with just 44 points. Game week rank just outside the 3 million mark. 
Overall, I'm 1,706. So two red arrows in a row. Now, this is disappointing because the last two weeks I've played a chip. And normally with chips, I expect green arrows. I normally get green arrows. So I'm going to do a chip next game week as well. So let's see if we can get three reds from three chips in a row. If I do, that'd be something a bit special. So I'm now 28 points behind 500,000 and 17 in front of 1 million. So 10 weeks to go. Hopefully I can get that little orange bar a bit higher up yet. 589 subscribers. Thank you very much indeed. All of you like to watch this and find out my misery and watch me justify it. Thank you very much. So in the Content Creators League, which is on FPL Game Week, if you go to this website, you'd see where you'd appear. Ben Krellin's currently top. I think he's, I could be wrong, I think he's around the 600-something mark globally, 600th rank. So he's doing very, very well. Second is FPL Harry. You might watch him. He's certainly somebody I like watching on YouTube. I'm all the way down onto the second page. I'm down to 54th now. And the only other star that I particularly recognise on here would be FPL Focal. But then he would say that he's having an extremely bad week. But he's beating me. But he has played his bench boost and I haven't. So will I make up the 19 points for my bench boost next week? Don't know. Knowing my luck? Probably not. <laughs> there is luck in this game. But there's a lot of skill. To be fair, those that keep get doing well, there's a certain amount of skill there, I'm sure. So game week 29, I'm going to bench boost. And this is my team as it stands. I got three Brighton boys, a Stupion, March, Matoma, home to Brentford, away to Bournemouth. I've got two Man United boys, Fernandes and Rashford, away to Newcastle, home to Brentford. And I've got the old mule hat on Rashford. Now, I know he's marked yellow, but... By coincidence, very unfortunate, it's just as there's an international break coming up. So he can't leave the club and he's he's going to be staying at Old Trafford. Who knows, maybe get a note from his mum and he'll be alright to play in the next game. And then from Chelsea, I've got Kepper in goal, home to Villa, home to Liverpool. I've also have Chilwell. I've got Trippier for Newcastle, home to Man United, away to West Ham. But of course, everyone's got Trippier, so there's nothing special in that. All these players I've shown you so far, loads of managers are going to have a lot of these. I know some are looking how to get to Fernandes, but they'll find ways to do that. I have Salah. He's my vice captain. There's a lot of managers around me that won't have Salah. He's away to Man City and away to Chelsea. And then next game week, he's at home to Arsenal. So he's got three difficult games that so people have been very comfortable to get rid of him. So if Salah does well, and he does do well against the big team sometimes, that's going to help me out a lot. I also have Haaland, which surprisingly is going to be a differential around my rank. He's only got one game, that's against Liverpool. So a lot of people have offloaded in. He didn't play last week. So Haaland, Salah, let's have a three or game, both of them getting a hat-trick. That'd be very nice indeed. And then I have Johnson for Forrest up front, home to Wolves and away to Leeds. Uh, he could score he's the most likely on their team to get points so he's kind of all right and having a cheap striker like that allows me to have Fernandez, Salah and Haaland in the squad and then on my bench I've got Raya in goal Darwin up front he's I'm intending to keep Darwin and Salah for the rest of the season so I know he's marked as yellow but oops he had a bit of a cut in his ankle oh boohoo I can't go off to the internationals I think he's going to be fine for Man City and Chelsea and then I've got Botman and I've got Henry. So it's not a particularly strong bench, but double game week, who knows? 29 players out there with the captain, of course, it kind of makes 31 players, I guess. So I might do all right. And there we have it, my bench boost for game week 29. I'm intending and hoping to not have to make a transfer because I have one transfer left between now and game week 32 for each week to move on players that aren't playing in game week 32. So I need to not be wasting any transfers or else I need to be taking hits, which I don't mind doing sometimes. Um, as for this season, obviously I'm not going to win the whole thing, but I have been starting to think about next season already. So hopefully next season I can get the number one spot overall. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>